it or not, we found a bench here in the nation's capital. But more importantly, we found a guest who is going to keep you glued to your seats. The man with the same name twice, Miguna Miguna. You know him as the founder, leader of the National Revolutionary Movement in Kenya. He was also senior policy advisor to the former Prime Minister Raila Molo Odinga. And yes, he's a barrister, he's a solicitor, and an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. More importantly, he is the man who swore in the former Prime Minister as the People's President on January 30th, 2018. Two days later, all hell broke loose for this man. By the way, recently the High Court ruled that Miguna Miguna can have his passport back, his Kenyan one, and some change, about seven million or so, but none of that has actually been forthcoming. Miguna's story today, like you've never heard, sit back. Miguna is on the bench. Very good. You've, you've really improved. <laughs> you know, I, a couple of times before when I introduced you, mm. I forgot the barrister, mm. I'd forget the solicitor, oh, wow. oh, yeah, I'd forget one or two things. Eh? The but ornaments. But the, the ornaments. And deserved as well. But now I'm okay. You're good. <laughs> You're good to go. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't have a mic. They're hearing me? Look at this. Oh, I have a mic. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you just put it there like we, a fly. We, before you knew it. So, Miguna, yes. I, 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 you know, you have been through hell. Let's face it. You have been through hell and back. And I, and, and I think I first want to take us back to that time before we can talk about the present. Okay. So, let's go back. Mm -hmm. Um... You swear in. Let's go to the swearing in. Yes. January 30th, 2018. Mm -hmm. And we've heard all kinds of stories about that day. Mm -hmm. uh, that the other principals were told to keep away. Uh, nobody wanted to be anywhere near the park for fear of being arrested. Mm -hmm. You are the man who swore in Raila Molodinga as the people's president. Mm -hmm. You. Why? Why? Because it was the right thing to do. Uh, and still the right thing to do. We had a fraudulent election on August 8th, uh, 2017. It is indisputable. It's a fact. Because the, the Supreme Court found uh, it to be so. And uh, many objective observers, Kenyans and foreigners, also agree that the way that the election had been conducted was fraught with illegalities, irregularities, and uh, muckraking uh, that could not uh, pass the legitimacy test. So... Oh, oh, an election where you voted for Uhuru Kenyatta? I, I did, but I ran as an independent candidate. But you voted for him? I did in that election. And that's the only time I voted for Uhuru Kenyatta. A lot of people keep on saying I voted for him in 2013. I actually did not vote in 2013. I was not even a registered voter in 2013. So in 2017, on August 8th, I voted for him. I did not vote again on the, the October 26th. There was no election. And the reason being is that Raila disappointed me badly uh, when I worked as his uh, advisor. He betrayed me. He kicked me to the curb. He betrayed Kenyan's aspirations. I had hoped that he would be able, number one, not to surrender to Kibaki in 2007 because he had won that election too. He won it? He won that election. So I maintain that he won that election. And Raila should never have surrendered. If you are right, and if you win an election, you should never surrender to the person who has not won. Just because he has guns, or he has more money, or he has rallied support uh, on his side, uh, Anan and the rest had convinced him that Kenya was bigger, and that we were going to be able to transform the state and the institutions, get a new constitution, so that this would not happen again. 207 would not happen again. Well, he didn't do that. And I kept reminding him, this thing will come back to bite you. Let's do everything that we said we were going to do. Let's make sure that we wrestle impunity and we ensure that Kenyans 
we'll have a real democracy and that no election would be stolen again. He never did anything. So now when we get a new constitution, I told him as his advisor that we should get a parliamentary federal system. We could restructure the state and make sure that equity gets to the people. Again, Raila supported the presidential system with Orengo, Utieno Kajuang, they told me I did not understand the value of the presidency, that only him, him alone as Raila Odinga being president would bring equity. I told him you cannot make a constitution for you because you're a human being just like everybody else. You can die, your worst enemy could uh, become president. And I told him, let's do this constitution as if we are doing it for Ruto. Because at the time, he had already fallen out with Ruto. Mm -hmm. I told him, let's do it for your worst enemy, your worst nightmare. Let's restrain the presidency and the president so that they cannot abuse power, including yourself. Because there will be a president, even if you become one, after you. He never listened to me. In 2017, I had had it with Royal Odinga. But despite my knowledge, despite me not supporting him, I was in the elections. I was a gubernatorial candidate in Nairobi. I saw how the elections were conducted. I knew he won. Okay? Yeah. And if anybody wants to challenge me as to why I say so, let them open the servers, the IEB servers. Let's audit it independently, forensically. So, 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 so the reason why I decided to swear Ayla in, mm -hmm. coming back to that, yes. is that I was not doing this for myself. I was not doing it out of spite. I was not doing it because I wanted Uhuru or somebody else to be president. I was doing it for electoral justice. The same reason why I had vied as an independent candidate. I did not go to ODM. I did not join Jubilee. I, I opposed Jubilee's candidate who was Sonko and opposed uh, Raila and ODM's candidate, who is Evan Skidero. Why you though? People ask, why are you the one who swore Raila as the people's president? Okay, so to cut a long story short, I founded the NRM. A lot of people will tell you I didn't, mm -hmm. but they don't know where the strategy was done. I formed a think tank called the Final Stand and I recruited thinkers and strategists into this final stand uh, think tank, uh, including David D, who was a member of my think tank, all right? Mm -hmm. Including Waika Wanyoike, a lawyer, including Abubakar Zain, including uh, Dr. Njoya, including many, many people. Immediately after the election, I did that immediately after the election, and we used to meet and we met frequently and I was coordinating the group. And we came up with a strategy of how do we make sure we stop these guys from perpetuating impunity. What I mean is, Uru Kenyatta and his group, Ruto, Uru Kenyatta, Rai Lodinga, because we knew that even if we were able to stop Uru Kenyatta from pursuing this route, we were not safe with Rai Lodinga either. This is a recognition many people have. So how are we going to make sure that we stop Uhuru, but we also stop anybody else, including Raila, from doing the same thing. So say, for example, we had a, developed a strategy, a two-pronged strategy. One, the People's Assembly strategy emerged from this group. We mobilized people through the People's Assembly, which would be a, a public display of disaffection with the government, and also rallying them to a just cause. But at the time, of course, doing it in collaboration with the NASA, because NASA had contested an election and Raila and NASA had won. So we wanted to do that. So you give legitimacy to a real winner, all right? Use that platform to be able to make Kenyans politically conscious in order to liberate them. The second prong was to found and lead a liberation movement. Because Kenya is not liberated. K 
Kenya got flags and a national anthem, ornaments, but real independence is not there. Mine was an army of freedom fighters. We fight using words. You don't have to use guns. Okay, so we, yeah. uh, during all this... So why was I the one to swear I like yes. coming back? Yeah, because there were other players. There were other players. They all refused to swear Ayla in. Orengo had said he would get a retired judge. Then at the last minute, you remember there were many postponements. Yes. Yes. Some of those postponements were mainly because Raila was not really for the swearing in. Because there was a Tanzania version, remember? No, there was no Tanzania version. This only came after the fact. When people were now explaining, they were trying to tell Kenyans, mislead them. People like Ndi were trying to mislead Kenyans that I wanted Raila to be sworn abroad. That's not entirely true. It's only partly true. We and I came up with strategies of how we were going to make this work. And I said, because as a lawyer and as somebody who is a student of history, you can only be guided by history. Just months before, Adama Baru in Gambia had won an election and the president there, the dictator, Yaya Jameh, had refused to leave power. Adama Jameh uh, Baro did not surrender. He went to Senegal, he mobilized the international community, he got sworn in uh, in Gambian embassy in uh, Senegal, Dakar. He came back, he got into power. Watara in Cote d'Ivoire, who is supposed to be Raila's uh, president, got into power by refusing to concede to the Bagbo. Bagbo, because Bagbo refused. He got himself into a resort, said that was his headquarters, and started fighting for what he believed was just. And he's now the president, now twice. So I told Raila, there is no reason why, if we can't have you sworn in in Kenya, we cannot go to Tanzania. You say that Magufuli is your best friend. And you also say Akofo Ado, or the president of Ghana, is your best friend. Talk to them. Let's see if they can accommodate us. Because between having hundreds of thousands or thousands of people being killed in Nairobi, if that was going to be, and having you sworn in a neighboring country or another country, we would rather do that. I also advised him to form his cabinet and send representatives to the UN, to the AU, try to mobilize and rally the world community. That's how you get power. You don't get power by sitting in Nairobi and holding press conferences. So if he are doing that. So I told him that we can also do it in Kenya. We can do it at Uhuru Park. We can do it at any other place other than Uhuru Park. But provided that we have hundreds of, of, hundreds of thousands of people to a million or more, because you cannot shoot a million people. So eventually, they decided that we were going to do it in Nairobi. All right? Yeah. But when he approached people to swear him in, he told me himself. They refused. So he told me, you know, this was the fourth swearing in. The first swearing in was supposed to take place privately in Jimmy Wanjigi's house. All right? You, you mean recorded? Recorded, yes. but beamed live to the world, and nobody would know where we are doing it. Yes. But you can get a, a, a live feed. From anywhere? From anywhere. We had the cameras ready, rolling, and everything. We In had... Wanjigi's house? In Wanjigi's house. And Raila came late, and then uh, played games uh, on us, left, said that he had spoken with the Mudavadi and with Angola, that they asked for more time. And within a short time, we saw Kivutha Kibwana and some other people addressing a press conference that it had been cancelled. Now, I asked myself, if Raila had been serious, Kivutha Kibwana had to come from Makweni, which is quite a distance. Mm. They had to prepare the press statement. They had to meet. This did not happen within minutes of us trying to swear him in. So the man had just grown cold feet. All that right? That's the first one. The first one. The second one, was Mombasa. Raila calls me that uh, the People's Assembly in Kilifi. I was in my house and he says that uh, Orengo told him that um, I had given up. I decided not to. I said, no, Orengo never told me that. 
He never asked me to come to Kilifi. Nobody invited me, nobody told me anything. So I didn't even know you were going to Kilifi. I knew there was a people's assembly in Kilifi, but I'd been to the one in Vega, I'd been to the one in Kakamega, I'd been to other, one, uh, other people's assembly. I didn't have to attend every single one of them. And uh, so he says, I want you to come here and swear me here. Because people, particularly the women, are wild. They want me sworn in now. So I say, well, then you have to book immediately and uh, because otherwise I wouldn't make it. That was around 10 o'clock. So by the time we finish, I changed and uh, took a taxi. And by the time I reached the CBD, he tells me to go to Wilson. That a guy called Jeff, who is his, uh, uh, one of his guys who does the bookings, mm -hmm. had booked a flight for me from uh, Wilson. So I went to Wilson. And when I reached uh, Mombasa, he sent his driver to pick me up. I could tell right away that the security apparatus were all over the place watching me. They locked the roads. I couldn't move right from the airport. We had to make detours through the port and Kichorochoros until we reached Mtuapa. On the way, Joho claimed that he had sent a vehicle. He's one of his security vehicles to pick me up so that they could clear the traffic so that I could reach on time. That was a mistake. Because whereas uh, the police may not have known where we were, now Joho sent a vehicle that he had already told the police to stop. So when I reached Mutuapa, they threw the roadblock. So then the third one was at his home. Karen. Karen. Two days before uh, Tuesday, all right? Before the 30th, yeah. a Sunday. The Sunday before the 30th, I swore him in. This one took place. You actually swore him in? Yes, privately. And that is the first time we invited people like Kajuang to attend, just to be spectators to the swearing in. Kajuang was never involved in the discussions. Were there any cameras? There were cameras. It was recorded live. Were we did it just like we did it in Urupa. Orengo was, Orengo was sitting, was standing next to him. Yeah. I was standing on his right side, Orengo on his left side. He took the, the, the oath and I commissioned yeah. it. Where's and, the footage? Oh, he has it. It was done by the, the NASA TV that is headed by his son. The Maasai guy uh, is a, a photojournalist mm. and he's also a videographer. Mm. He's the one who actually videoed the, the thing. So you There's did a the guy whole who, ceremony in his house? We did the whole ceremony in his house just in case that on the 30th of January, the security agencies stop us from conducting this uh, ceremony anywhere else. Well, it was not just going to be Uru Park. Mm. If they had disrupted us in Uru Park, we were going to do it anywhere else that we were able to congregate. Tell me something. Were the other principals at this swearing in? No, Muda they were not. Mudavadi, Wetangula, Kalonzo? No. 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 None of the so called NASA bigwigs were there. We knew they were not coming. Raila knew they had said they were not coming. I had. Uh, been taken to Mudavadi's uh, office to convince Mudavadi. I got along with Mudavadi fairly well. He actually part of the people who, who contributed to my campaign. And uh, I spoke with Mudavadi at length and tried to explain why he should come to the swearing in. And Mudavadi's last words were that, you know, Miguna, I'm a conservative and I believe in the system. So, and he left. On the 30th, yes. none of the principals were at Uhuru Park. Why? Well, only they can talk about it. All I know is that they were not supporting the swearing in. They had chickened out. I think it was probably fear, cowardice. Because they wanted power. Otherwise, they would not have been in NASA campaigning against Uhuru, going to an election. And they campaigned throughout the country. They went to Homer Bay days before the swearing in and swore on the Bible that they, are, they were going to be at Uhuru Park. Raila even declared that he was ready to die. But when push came to shove, they never showed up. They I were not ready to die. I remember your words. You said you're going to swear in Raila whether he likes it or not. What did you mean by that? I meant that Kenya had and has reached a stage where power cannot be obtained through guns by force. Uh, that 
we've struggled to make Kenya's democracy work and that it would be a crime, a very bad crime against humanity to impose leaders on Kenyans and invalidate their votes. But then, all right? Okay. So, so, you, well, so, hold on, hold so on, hold on. and, and, and yes. Magufuli, uh, Raila called Orengo in my presence when we had gone, me, Mudama, and Orengo had gone to uh, Mudama's resort to discuss the swearing in. Raila calls, Orengo picks up, and Raila puts Orengo to Magufuli so that. Orengo could explain to Magufuli the reasons why we are insisting on the swearing in and why Magufuli believes that we shouldn't go ahead with it. Okay, a moment ago you said they agreed with Uhuru Kenyatta. Yes. Are you trying to say that the whole handshake thing had been agreed upon before? Yes. Hold that thought, Miguna. Yes. Hold that thought. Goodness gracious me, this is revealing. I told you, this guest... Miguna Miguna is going to keep you glued to your seats. He says the handshake was prearranged. Oh, by the way, did I mention that Miguna Miguna has a new book out? You need to read it. It's called Treason, the Case Against Tyrants and Renegades. It is out now, folks. It is in Kenya. And it is available in <laughs> Kenya. <laughs> Jeff Kinange Live takes a break. Plenty more ahead. Keep tweeting at Koinange Jeff. At Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag, as always, is JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.